Okay, so the implicit association test in principle is this word association game. It's actually predicated, I would say, on psychoanalytic ideas, uh, most particularly on Jungian ideas, because Jung developed the association test many, many, many years ago. But it purports to investigate whether you are unconsciously biased towards one group or against another group. Could be gender, could be ethnicity, could be race, could be attractiveness, whatever. But the problem is, is that when you give the same person the damn IAT twice, they don't get the same results. So there's a rule for diagnostic tests. And the rule is the reliability, test retest reliability, has to exceed something like 0.8 or 0.9. 0.8 at least. So the big five does that, IQ tests do that, but there's a damn, uh, there's damn few tests that pass that reliability criteria, and the IAT is only reliable, I don't remember precisely, but I think it's about 0.5, which isn't even, it's not even near close enough to be used as a diagnostic test. Plus, it's not valid. So what does that mean? Well, let's say I assess your unconscious bias and give you a diagnosis. Well, there's no evidence that it predicts your behavior. So, so what, is, what good is it? What good is it? Well, it's good if you want people to uh, send you to retraining exercises so that you can have your perceptions adjusted in the direction that your organization and the state thinks is proper. And that's happening everywhere. I got letters this week already from people at CBC. It's becoming mandatory there. St. Mike's Hospital, same thing. And they've decided that all of their micro institutions within the hospital will be equitable. There will be 50% women and 50% men at every single level of the organization, or the organization is corrupt and oppressive. It's like, it's, and that, it's, it's spreading so fast you can't believe it. I wrote Mazarin Benaji and Anthony Greenwald yesterday and sent it off to some of my colleagues saying, are you going to come out and make a public statement about the fact that your damn test is being used by pathological people for nefarious purposes? It's like, well, we'll see what they have to say about that. I was a bit more polite in my letter than that. <laughs> but there's no excuse for it. There's absolutely no excuse for it. And as far as I'm concerned, it's pro part of the broader corruption of social psychology. You guys may know or may not that social psychology has been rife with, with uh, controversy and scandal over the last three or four years. And a big part of the reason for that is it's damn corrupt discipline. And the use of the IAT for political reasons is a perfect example of that. There is no excuse for it. And the people at St. Mike's, you know, they say, well, this is scientifically validated. It's like, no, it's not. And worse, let's say you do have unconscious bias, just for the sake of argument, and you could measure it reliably, which you can't, and that it was valid, which it isn't. Let's say all of those things were in case. There's no evidence whatsoever that those damn unconscious bias training programs, retraining programs, have the effect that they're supposed to have, and there's some evidence that they actually have the reverse effect. And maybe that's because people don't really like being marched off to re-education by their employers after they've been diagnosed as racist, even if there's no evidence that they in fact are. So it's an absolute misuse of psychology, and, it's, and it's, it's politically motivated. It's politically motivated. It's an assault on freedom. Anyways, I made those two videos, and I took, tried to take the HR and equity people at U of T to task, because they made that training mandatory for their HR people. I thought, you don't have the right as an employer to invade the unconscious structures of your employees' minds and alter their political perspective, even though you can't do it. You don't have the right to do that and to think about it as something you should do as a matter of course, as part of your ethical duty is... Uh, you really want that? You really want that? That's what you want your employers to be able to do. Hmm? Figure out, independently of your behavior, whether or not you're, like a, you're a racist or a classist or, or a misogynist or whatever that happens to be. And you really think that the bureaucrats at the university, for example, or bureaucrats anywhere for that matter, are actually capable and qualified of doing such a thing properly, you know, doing far more damage than, than any possible good.